I was going to start working on my power brake booster, but I couldn't find the little uh, manual on, you know, it's just, it, GM makes separate little manuals for uh, different components on the car, like the booster for the power brakes and the windshield wiper motor, you know, just odds and ends that are rebuildable that are not in the shop manual. The shop manual shows how to change these and install them and remove them, but it doesn't show how to rebuild them. This does. This is a printed by General Motors, but the paint pretty much all dry. It's been drying now for four or five days, and uh, it's ready to ready to uh, put together. Sorry about every time I go to record the uh, furnace kicks on, but it is really cold out and. Uh, it's been a while. I've been monkeying around here, taking all this stuff down and laying it out. Back to work on the power brake booster. This is a couple days later. I just work on it a little here and a little there as I can. Um, but I read the the Bendix Rebuild Overhaul Manual, basically from cover to cover. And I have this too because uh, the windshield washer stopped working on the Bel Air, and I suspect I know what the component is. And somewhere around, I have the component, but it's a relay that energizes uh, the washers. Um, let me see if I can find it, and I'll show you. This is what I suspect is this terminal board because I can take this off and work that manually, and the washers work. So this this isn't damaged. That's all part of the the washers but anyway this is what I that circuit or that um, either it's got a bad solder joint to the electromagnet or the electromagnet's bad but um I'll get that deal with that you know another time it's not I don't drive the car to where I need it so I'm not worried about it but yeah the power brakes I kind of want them to work properly so I went through this and it gives you spring heights and uh right here so we're going to measure the springs and make sure they're all right now you can get a kit Harman sells a kit that comes with the you know it's basically this kit here in addition it comes with these three springs and the reaction disc and the reaction disc is what goes behind this inside of a, let me uh, see if I can get things, goes down in here and you can see there's a little hole there and this goes in there to where you can see it there. And that just protrudes just a tiny wee bit when you really push on it. There's an o-ring right here. And from what I gather, this reaction disc is exactly what it is, a reaction disc. So when you really jam the brakes hard, like if you're stopping and you got good power assist and you really jam down hard on the pedal, this rubber will prevent, kind of push it back on this and close the vacuum valve. You know, it won't allow this to keep the vacuum valve open because it comes through this. You can see where it's kind of been through the hole a few times and uh, that prevents the wheels from locking up from power assist pulling the vacuum booster on harder you know even though your foot pedal your foot may not be pushing it harder you don't want the vacuum to draw the brakes on harder so that just kind of stops the vacuum from flowing on ultra hard braking so you don't uh, you know get too sensitive a brake pedal and skid the tires and uh, this doesn't seal vacuum or anything. It just, you know, I could put it in the other way around and it would probably be fine. But I can, uh, Ryan from Iowa Classic Cars, I've been in contact with him. He wants that box to use as a display in his garage. And so he's willing to trade me parts I need for that box. And I'm willing to do it. So I got to find a new box for that setup that's in there and uh, pack it up so I can box the box up, mail it off to him, and then he's gonna mail me a parts booster that I can, you know, get this.
and this side of saving me buying it. Now this kit here was a hundred and hang on, let me find the receipt. There you can see it was hundred and nine fifty plus about you know eight fifty five, and that was before they tax this kind of stuff online. Now they tax it, so about one hundred and twenty five dollars for this uh, kit here, and this is who it's from. And I talk to these people, and they do not sell the reaction bisque separately. So I got all of my my uh, brake components here. Like I say, less the springs and the and the reaction disc. But there's a company that sells them for 59 early 60 Cadillacs, and they use the same. Power booster, this bracket here I think was slightly different and the way it was mounted was slightly different. But the booster itself was exactly the same. You know, this the part from these riveted on brackets on was no different. And uh, like I say, that kit comes with these springs that I'm going to measure. And if they're all the right height, I'm not going to order it because that kit for that Cadillac booster is about $225 probably by the time I get it shipped here. So I'm not going to not gonna buy it. And it comes with this new, not this piece, but it comes with this new. So if you have one of these that this little metal spring is rotted out on, that comes in that kit too. So, you know, you can, can find them that has this. There's the spring without the packing in it. So you can get that, and like I say, it's about $225. So rebuilding one of these vintage boosters, if you're going to try and do your car back to original. And, you know, as I've always said, going back to factory original is a lot more time-consuming and expensive than customizing. You know, you could run to AutoZone and buy a chrome-plated $59 power brake booster and bolt it on and be ready to go, but... I want the original stuff under the hood of that car. I want it to look period correct. And and to me, that's the, you know, the, a lot of people, well, why don't you just do this or that and, cut, you know, put aftermarket disc brakes or, you know, do this or that or whatever to it. But half the fun of these old cars to me is driving them. And I like to drive them with the quirks they had back then. That's the fun, you know. And, and uh, you know, I'll take a non-synchronized gearbox and old truck over a fully synchronized one any day if that's what it came with. That's the fun of driving it is double clutching it and trying not to grind the gears and stuff. That's just the way I am. If I'm going to drive a vintage vehicle, I want to drive a vintage vehicle. I don't want to drive a new vehicle with a vintage body on it. To me, that's just not, not uh, fun. But anyway, back to this. So we're going to measure some springs here. And if everything's okay, we're just going to put it back together with what I have. And when I get those parts from Ryan, I'll have these two parts. And I'll have a complete... I'll, ha I'll be able to put another complete booster together. Because this one, I can take these parts out of the booster on the Bel Air right now if I have to. When I go to put this booster on. And I can put these in when this is totally 100% assembled. This does not have to go in. Until you get ready to bolt your master cylinder on. In fact, I usually don't put them on in, until I get ready to bolt the master on. I'll put them in a little Ziploc baggie and, you know, tie it to the bolt hole or something. Because otherwise, if it falls out and down inside, you know, in the can, and then you got that big spring, and you try and rattle or shake it out or get it out with a magnet or something, gets to be a bit of a challenge. So the best thing to do is just not even put these in until you're ready to use the booster. So I'm not worried about having that immediately. But anyway, I just kind of wanted to, you know, yap about that kind of stuff. So anyway, let's get on with it and I'll measure the springs and we'll start putting the booster together. I guess before I get going a little bit further here, I just wanted to go over another thing here too. Though. So the manual shows to use these cleaning fluids. And I think I... This, like I say, this video is over a few days now, and I think I already might have yapped about this. Do not use any solvents that are petroleum-based. That uh, declean stuff, I had some of that. And, yeah, you could use it in win your windshield washers. It would act as antifreeze and clean your glass really well. But, essentially, it's similar to a modern-day brake clean, except the modern-day brake cleans have acetone. So you don't want to use it on plastics or put it in your windshield washer 
bottle or anything like that, but this is like a, what a can of it would look like. And this stuff evaporates really quick, so generally once you open it, use it. But it's methanol, and well, you can see what it is, right, I think. And uh, then the, the brake clean, which will work, you can kind of see what, I have to pause your video, but you can kind of see it's uh, essentially, you know, it'll work. I'm, I'll probably use alcohol because I have uh, some spray methanol stuff, to, which is like a wood alcohol. You know, it's extremely poisonous. You don't want to ingest it. But anyway, um, enough of this. Let's, uh, and I, I had, I can't find my can. I have a can of it somewhere around. It's kind of a, almost looks like transmission fluid color, but it's, you know, thinner. But anyway, I can't can't find it so we're just going to use alcohol or something to that effect now i took my steel rule here and this spring here should be one and nine 64 inch tall and this scale over here is in 64 of an inch and i set it at exactly nine one and nine 64 so let's see what we got here and it actually right on the money pushes down the spring into the paper as I touch it with the ruler down to the paper. So that spring's good. The other spring is supposed to be one and a half inches, so I'll set this at one and a half inches. And it's right on the money too. Actually, almost a little taller, so that's all good. That's the spec, and this spring should be five and a half inches. There's five and a half inches. And that's right touching the top of the spring. Okay, so we know the springs are good, so I don't need to worry about the springs. Another thing it states is to check check the valve, you know, check all this for nicks and damage, all this, this stuff here. And it shows a rubber bumper right there. I don't know if this camera is focusing in on that or not, but it looks like a little O-ring and, and being a bumper, it says uh, check the condition of the valve plunger, you know, stem rubber bumper. And... Uh, That's the rubber bumper, and it looks pretty deteriorated. And I'm assuming it's an O-ring, but it just goes down in there. And I assume that if it was all the way to the edge there, to where it would do good as a bumper, it would be up. About like that. And then, you know, there I can just push it in, but to get it even with the rubber right there. So our rubber bumper is just going inside of uh, that. So I'm going to, I dug around with all my O-rings. I have tons of O-rings around here, even some for air conditioning here. Just, I always get O-rings in estate sales whenever I see them. You not, never can have enough. But anyway, found one that looks about right. Carefully, this thing's all flattened out too. Okay, there's there's what it calls a rubber bumper. And this O-ring here looks like it's the same size. I don't have anything thinner than this. I think that's just hammered thin, but this fits in that groove around see there's a groove there it fits in that so I'll put this o-ring on here it'll eventually get all smashed flat but now let me move this so I don't lose it now it sits up there a little bit but when I push on it I can push it down right even with the with the metal now my foot pressure with all these brackets and everything is going to be way more excessive than what I'm pushing with my hands. So there's no doubt that's going to bottom 
on this edge. But when they call it a bumper, I'm assuming that's what it is, a bumper, so it doesn't isn't metal to metal, there to there. The kit does not come with that, nor does the one for the Cadillac kit that's booster does not come with this with a the part there. So, you know, I'm assuming See how thin that is? Let me get one of these uh, O-rings like I'm, this is the one I'm using. Let me see if I can get them together here. So you can see one's substantially thicker than the other, but I think this one's just thinned out from all the years of being smashed. If it doesn't work, I'll take it apart and change the O-ring. Um, put this back on it, I'll save it, but I don't think that's gonna cause it from not functioning. I think that will work just fine, you know, because it does call it a bumper and it says to inspect the condition and it looks pretty deteriorated. And just with some thumb pressure, I can push that right down even with the, to where these metal things just about touch. So I'm gonna call that good on that. I just put the valve in, you know, just put it in with two bolts. So you can see it down in there. And with this, all this does is squish down in, like I say, to prevent this from going as far. So when you apply the brakes, that moves and that's what opens the valves and as that moves this moves and as you release the brakes this comes back and releases the vacuum you know so you get back to atmospheric pressure on both sides but i just wanted to make sure that that moved the right distance and it does with that o-ring i put in there so that thing there should come up flush and it does. And that way if that reaction disc, you know, this, if this is pushing on the reaction too hard because that goes to the brake cylinder, then it squeezes down in there slightly and prevents that from coming up all the way, which reduces the vacuum to the, to the side, which is the assist side, the vacuum side. This is the atmospheric pressure side. So I just wanted to kind of make sure that that Worked with that O-ring, and it seems to work perfect. So I'm going to go with it. You can just see how I kind of haphazardly assembled it. I'm just going to take it all back apart now. These are the all the old parts. And I got to reuse that and that. This comes new in the kit. And again, you can see the... I don't know if you can see the imperfections on that or not. Do they show up? Yeah, there they do. That's enough to cause a vacuum leak to stop a power booster from working. That needs to be absolutely perfectly smooth. Because if that seals on this little surface right here, and if that bump causes it not to seat on there tightly, It'll be a vacuum leak and your power brakes won't work correctly. So you gotta, you know, you kinda gotta make sure everything's good. And like I say, that O-ring there, or rubber bumper I'm gonna call it because that's what uh, the manual calls it. Rubber bumper. So I'm gonna call that good and start with the rest of it. So the first thing I gotta do is open up the new packaging because the new, this is the old felt. It says to soak it in automatic transmission fluid type A. So we're going to get it out and soak it in some trans fluid. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run a tap quickly through those holes because some of them, one of them was hard to get one of those bolts in. So, and I just put two in, so I'm just going to clean up the threads. Ran a die through the bolt, uh, and the bolts too, along with uh, tapping the holes as I stated. I just wanted to make sure these screws would go all the way in without any resistance so when I torque them down they're torqued properly instead of loose because they're bound up from crudding the threads. So it's important to make sure all your threads are clean and everything goes in and out, you know, unscrews and screws in 
freely. It doesn't really matter what you're working on. You should always make sure the threads are clean and don't bind anywhere, especially if they have to be torqued to a certain spec. This is the one that they say to soak in ATF type A while well, I'm using this. Transmission fluid type won't really matter with uh, with this uh, component. It's not like part of the transmission. So anyway, I'll let that soak a few minutes. And in the meantime, we can start assembling some of this. And I want to show you... Um, this. This is that disc that was lumpy on the other one. Look at how nice and smooth that is. That'll, that'll seal nicely right there. And one thing I have to say is I'm not impressed with this. Look at how poorly trimmed out that is. So I might uh, try and take an exacto knife and just clean. Well, I don't know that the flashing will hurt anything. That nah, won't hurt anything. Just leave the rubber flashing on there, but yeah, they're not they're not the same exact as the you know they they'll work, but see I gotta kind of fit it down in there, but maybe that's the way it's supposed to be, and you can see the fit there isn't as tight as over there, and they're not perfect, but it'll work. All right, let me uh show you how actually how this goes in. Let me set my camera on the little stand. This goes and here like so whoops kind of like so then this piece goes here oh i gotta put the Put the valve in. Wouldn't work very good without that part, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm not impressed with this rubber. This kit is not the best reproduction in the world, but it'll suffice. All right, there we go. And then the springs. Let's put two in it for right now, and then I got to get the torque spec and see if I got to put sealer or like Loctite on the bolts or anything. But then that that, that works. So hopefully, the, if this doesn't work, well, we'll know it's that that poor rubber. I saved the all the original stuff because it's still pretty good usable other than that you know this this piece i need and uh this is for the master cylinder so you know it goes in the bore right there so you don't get a vacuum leak there all right let me uh let me look up see if, what the torque specs are and everything for this i just want to get some of the things out of my way so i'm going to put this uh intake and filter back on this goes up you know so it faces a little up and in finding the screw holes for this thing is not there it is
Some people trim the excess off. I just leave it because that's the way they came from the factory. This is so you don't get dirt in the atmospheric side. So the back side of it, when you apply vacuum to the front side, it draws its air in here. This is where the air pressure comes in to push the, the piston. Let's see, does that show? I don't even think that shows up. But anyway, it pushes the, it's the air pressure that pushes the piston because of the lack of the pressure on the other side. I just wanted to get that out of my way. And uh, so that's why I put that on there. All the screws are just finger tight. And the reason why they're just finger tight is you've got to make sure everything lines up here. And that's where the special tool that I can't find that I made, I made one out of sheet metal and just welded a couple of tabs on it so I could pull it tight. And that just makes sure everything lines up. But seeing I can't find where I put that tool, I shoved it down in the bore and it seems pretty good. So, and plus it feels pretty good. And these uh, holes on this plate go into an inset. So it's probably right where it needs to be. So I'm just gonna torque the bolts down to specifications. I chose installing this uh, spring in here with that tool around there. So I might make something I found the little piece, you know, for setting the, the push rod depth, the little tool for that, but I can't find the tool that I made for that. But anyway, I'm going to very carefully go around and there's some of the old uh, stuff stuck on here. So I'm just going to, that's in lacquer thinner. So I'm just going to carefully clean that up and then that'll be ready to put in here. And then I'll take the excessive fluid out of the packing and put that together. And also, one last note, those are still finger tight, those bolts. That gets tightened down after everything's together. So I'll tighten it up, push it in, make sure everything's centered, you know, kind of settled in there, and then I'll torque them. Little uh, brake cleaner on that rubber, and that thing just popped right over onto there. This is the part that was never installed correctly. I'll just shoot a little brake cleaner on that ball when I ready to shove it down in there but we're gonna wait until we're a little closer together so it's just not in my way this is the ring you know that snaps in here to hold all that packing and stuff in and it was clearly painted gray you can see I was cleaning it up and I don't know if it shows up on the video or not but totally was painted gray so I'm gonna give it a quick coat of paint and let it dry for a couple hours and then we'll continue on. In the meantime, I can get that in place. Then all I got to do is put this, I'll put this in, put the hose on, and ready to assemble a booster. There we go. The expander ring is painted both sides. And uh, I got the felt in place and I got to put this on and this will go on about that way and I figured this will go on you know about this position because I got to glue this hose on yet it says to use rubber cement and that will go on you know about right there and then this is the where the other end of the hose goes in so just kind of holding it up here that's about the way it'll go and so this We'll go in like so, and I might put that on now so I don't uh, distort the rubber or anything. So I'm going to give this a little shot of uh, brake clean, but not by my camera. Just get a little on the ball there. And then that should... It says take a mallet and tap it if I need to, but I think I can... I think it's in now. I can't pull it out. And then pull this down and over this a little tighter than what the original one was.
And then if I need to turn this a little bit, I can, but um, that's pretty, pretty good right there. Like I say, this will go on there. And just double check. That looks pretty good. So it's together. Yeah, that'll be fine. And I'm gonna, as soon as that paint's dry, I'll put that ring on there. And then we can uh, start putting the thing in the can. So this ring, I just kind of set it down into those notches that fit most of the way around. And then I just, there, there, it's all, just put it in with my fingers. You can pull these, see that? So you can tug on it to pull it out. And, you know, you can just pop that out fairly easy. So there we go. The This part of the booster just needs to be torqued down those those uh, screws and then it's ready to go together so I think I might uh, and I got to glue this on so I might uh, torque them down then I'll glue that on I might let the the glue and this dry for a little while and then I'll start well maybe not we'll see we'll start putting it together Already torqued them once a little bit. Just going around a second time. And then I'm just going to go around, make sure I didn't miss any of them. Torquing them to 75 inch pounds. Whoops, sorry. Okay, they're all torqued down. Glue that hose on next. You can see where the. Hopefully, you can see where the dial is. All right, let me. Uh, I got my rubber cement out, and I can cement that hose on next. Yeah, it states to put the rubber cement on the the you know the nipple that sticks out. I guess so it doesn't go inside the hose, which is what I did, and I'm going to do the same for that, and then we'll get that thing in so we can throw the assembly together and then just got to put the bell crank stuff on it. It'll be done. I suspect this is to prevent vacuum leaks. Got a little much there. Get my rag so I can wipe my finger off here. All right, let me put this on there and then we'll be ready to put in the booster can. It says to get it on at least three quarters of an inch. And I'd say that's easily on three quarters of an inch. There, it's really on now. <laughs> All right, now I got to put some of this this grease stuff on this and in the can. This this is what they gave me with it. Normally, I'd use automatic transmission fluid, but seeing it came with this Vaseline stuff. I'm going to use it. All right, let me turn the camera off because this is going to be messy and I don't want this stuff all over my camera. So I have to put the smear in here. Well, the manual says to use automatic transmission fluid. But we're using this because this came with the, the rebuild kit and all the rebuild kits I see come with this stuff. That 
looks pretty good all the way around in there. And now I'm going to put it on the... Let's see. All right, there we go. That holds it. It's like a really thick, gooey Vaseline. It's definitely not Vaseline. Because we'll just, you know, I mean, if I get a toothpick, it's just gonna glob up in there. So I'm gonna call that good. Let me wipe my hands off here. All right, now let's see if I can get this thing together without making too big of a mess here. Make sure you orient this back together the way you took it apart. You don't want your master cylinder sideways, so that's why you got to make sure you clock it together in the correct orientation. Let me get another screwdriver seeing I'm using my one to hold the, the booster on. All right, well, you've seen screws go in, so I'll finish screwing it together, and then we'll uh, finish it off. I'm just going to go around and snug these up with my ratcheting screwdriver. I tighten them up pretty good with the hand one, but I'm going to give them a little extra tighten. Then i got to wipe my smudgies off. I'll do that after I put all the linkage on. I gotta put that rubber dust boot on still. Then I'll take a little brush and touch up any of these screws that might need a little touching up. See how the threads might need a little touching up. But there we go. The booster is together. Now I just gotta put this on, which goes over right here and there's a hole that hole goes down so it can drain obviously this is the bottom and that's where the top that's the bottom of the master where the master goes so let me uh let me get some of that brake clean on this we'll get this on too give this a little shot of brake cleaner And then let's see, there's like a little, I don't know if that shows up down in there or not, but there's a little rib knurled thing like things that it fits over. I think it's in all the way around, it appears to be. Just get a little turn back and forth to make sure. Yep, I'd say it's on all the way. 
make sure that hole's facing down, which it is. All right, let me put this uh, bell crank assembly on. Just kind of through that, those two halves together, and I'm going to grease these pins up. I'm not going to put that on because I might use the one that's on the car right now, and then I won't have to readjust it because that one I'll have to readjust so the brake pedal's the right height. So I'm going to just leave it alone, but I need to grease these just slightly with a little bit of just going to put a thin film of lithium grease on them. Doesn't take much. You don't want the stuff running up all over your brake components. I mean, brake components and and uh, petroleum distillants do not mix. The stuff if you put if you took your old brake parts and throw them in some motor oil or something, you'll see what I mean. Got grease all over my camera, so I guess I got to be a little more careful here. the holes. Just kind of want to put the holes so I know I can get the cotter pin through okay and then it won't catch on the firewall or anything. So I think that looks pretty darn good. Let's see where is the... Oh, it's on an angle. Okay, so it's either like that or like that. And I think we'll go like that. I have to take my mallet and tap that in. Found some new uh, cotter pins. All right, let me get something to tap that in. I'm going to touch up a few spots on the booster, like where the, just do a little tiny touch up brush where the screws come through, and then we'll clean it all up. I did, uh, to get these all in. I'll uh, go over that in a minute. I'll get those touched up and then we'll I'll show you it all finished up. Show you how I touch things up. Usually I save the little bit of the the uh, mixed paint but this paint was on put on six days ago so it would be like jello now. Once you put the hardener in the paint, you got to use it or throw it away. If you try and, if you put it back in your can, you'll wreck the paint. You won't be able to use it anymore. But anyway, I'm just going to go around and very carefully touch these up. Okay, you get the picture. I'm just going to go around and do it because I need to move it so I keep what I'm doing in the light. Did that one. And if you've seen one touched up, you've seen them all. So anyway, I'm going to stop you here. Here we go. There's the back side. You can see how I bend my cotter pins. I do that so you don't catch yourself on them. Some people just like hammer them and they're like that, and they're like that, and then you reach in there and you cut yourself on them. So I always try and put my pins so they're up against the surface so you don't catch yourself on them. And uh, I may have to touch up, you know, some other spots on it, but it, it applies and releases. And uh, looks pretty good. Let me flip it over so you can see the... The other side, let me um, get in a way to where you can see it. A few little hand smudges on it, wipe them off. And I'll probably stuff a paper towel or something in here just for now so dirt doesn't, you know, nothing gets in there. But yeah, all the screws, the little screws I touched up all the way around and like I say this this goes in the center of that here I'll, uh, I'll show you where that goes and this o-ring in here 
right there. That O-ring goes on the master cylinder in there to keep it from leaking vacuum. And that's the, the uh, reaction disc and the push rod that both need to be replaced. So hopefully I can get that from Ryan and I can... This will be all done. It's basically all done. I can use those components from the Bel Air. But see there's a hole. I don't know if that shows up in there or not. But this goes in that, and then this goes to your brake pedal. And uh, like I say, I'll use this on the one that's on the car so I don't have to um, readjust it, hopefully. But anyway, we got a complete master cylinder, or power brake booster. I'm sorry, I do have a, I do have a brand new master power brake master cylinder that I think I'm going to throw on it when I put it on the car. So I'll have a new booster and new master cylinder. And then that way I know I won't have fluid leaking into it or anything like that. That will work to keep stuff out. And uh, I think I'll find something to put it in until I put it on the Chevy. Put Find a box or something that I can pad so it doesn't get buggered up or dirty. But anyway, that's it for this video. I'll try and put the link to all the videos, each of the videos on rebuilding or overhauling and restoring this 59 Chevy Bendix Power Brake Booster uh, down in the description. And uh, you know, hopefully this video will help if you have a Bendix Power Brake Booster that needs overhauling. Most of the Bendix boosters are the same. Ford used that booster, a lot of GM cars use that booster. It's a common booster and uh, easy to rebuild. So, you know, hopefully, if, like I say again, if you need to rebuild yours, this video will help out the, the series. This is uh, part four, I believe. Anyway, that's it. If you like the video, definitely hit the like button. If you like my channel, you can hit that 348 engine icon that pops up there, that'll subscribe you. Share the video if you want, and thank you for watching my videos.